What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Import Modify. It's a continuation of the H22. Last episode we tore down a 10,000 RPM H22 to find out that we have a lot of good parts to utilize. The engine right here and this Civic behind me, well, it's not good anymore. So we need to tear this thing down. So we got to get it out, tear it down, see if we have a 50 millimeter crank. And if we do and the engine gods are in our favor, then we can move on with that engine build. So let's just go ahead, get things done and get right to it. Alright, so we gotta move the Civic from back there to where the Z31's at. So let's move some stuff around. We got the Civic in place now, and if you guys are digging the SRT4 or the Z31, go ahead and check out my playlist. I have full builds on both cars, hours and hours of uh, enjoyment for you guys to watch. So we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty on the EK right here because it houses the H to B swap that we need. So we're gonna get this thing up on a lift, start just taking everything off and get it out of the car. Let's do it. Thank you. 
All right, so we got the engine out of the EK now, and this is a typical H to B setup. It's got an adapter plate that allows you to mount this transmission to the H series, along with the uh, custom brackets and whatnot that allow it to go to the EK. And uh, one of the things on the H to B swap that people aren't aware of is that you have to trim back the block in the pan right here in order to get this uh, half shaft to mount up properly. And as you can tell on this one as well, it was trimmed back right there because this was an H to B swap as well. Whenever I had bought the engine a long time ago, uh, yeah, it was an H to B setup. So uh, you may be asking, what's my goals for this? My goals is to uh, hopefully rebuild this and have a, uh, a built engine and more than likely it'll find its place in the prelude. And uh, just to have an a, a built H22 is not a bad thing, right? To do it on a budget is a great thing. And uh, as long as it works out with this crankshaft, uh, it should work out for us pretty well. But I'm very optimistic because it's only one year that they have the 50 millimeter crank in the H22A4. And I'm hoping this is uh, gonna be in my favor, but uh, you know, it's unseen. So we gotta see. And also uh, I was led to believe that the uh, delete kit for the counter shafts on this engine wasn't done properly because if you see right here, I have one and uh, I do believe that this kit came with plugs for the galleys that feed the oil to the, the shafts and I didn't see any whenever I took the engine apart and I think that that's what happened with this engine is it, uh, it had a very short life. Even the threads on the, uh, the crank bolts and all that stuff whenever I took them out it still had like anti-seize on the threads. So that kind of tells me that the engine didn't last very long and also would uh, explain why the other parts are in pretty good shape. So uh, I think that they spun it up to 10,000 RPM and it didn't have the proper oil pressure for that RPM because it was bleeding all the uh, pressure through the countershaft holes. And that's what allowed it to burn that bearing up and uh, not last very long. So that's my theory on it. And uh, we'll be finding out as soon as we tear this down. So I'm gonna get this thing all uh, rearranged right here. I'm gonna take this engine off the stand and take the transmission and all that off so that we can you know, switch positions with this and uh, start the disassembly of this engine. So let's go ahead and get to that. All right, guys, so we got the other H22 on the engine stand. It's ready to be torn down. And there are some bits and pieces that we're gonna be keeping off of this for the other engine to uh, be used. And that's gonna be the uh, countershaft elite kit, the manual timing belt tensioner. I might as well reuse this timing belt. It's the Blue Gates performance one. And the oil pump is brand new and the oil pressure was not, ever a concern on this engine. It always has strong oil pressure. Where it failed, where I believe it failed is in the uh, cylinders because I bored over the stock sleeves. And I believe that's where it failed. That's why it only lasted 500 miles and I learned out after the fact. But we'll know for sure when we, ter uh, when we tear it down. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll find out here in a second. I do have the H to B kit that's on the ground so you guys can see what that consists of. Uh, it's this bracket right here, three bolts that attach it to the back of the block. You have the uh, extender right here, our spacer for the flywheel. Now you use a B-series flywheel and clutch. And also uh, you have this mount right here that uh, goes for the front for the engine mount. And this adapter right here for the uh, half shaft. So that's pretty much the H to B kit. And there's also uh, a spacer piece right here for the H22 uh, slave, I believe. I think that's that's an H22 slave. I'm not sure. So uh, I'm gonna take the spark plugs out of this real quick and uh, see which ones are sooted pretty bad and now tell me the ones that failed. I'm pretty sure it's three and four, but it gives me a great opportunity right now to do some YouTube magic. YouTube magic. All right, so looking at the spark plugs right here, you can see the ceramics, they're a little dark right there dark right there and then these two are white so yep three and four were the bad cylinders that uh i have the problem with so we'll know more when we tear into it and there's not a bunch of oil on this because at one point i did clean the plugs off so let's just get into it and tear down
Man, I got H22 parts spread out all over the shop. So I had to go to storage unit and go grab the engine stand so I could put the H22A on a stand like the A4 we just tore down. So since we got this torn down, let's go ahead and look at the cylinder walls. There's three and four. And looking at the cylinder walls of cylinder four, you can definitely see the wear. There's a lot of scoring going on in there. This one's not as bad, but there's a couple line grooves in it and stuff. So yeah, it confirms you just can't put uh, aftermarket pistons in a uh, board out stock sleeve. It just won't last. It'll self detonate. It'll chew itself down. It'll mess up like this. It only uh, lasted 500 miles, like I said, and started smoking terribly. So it didn't last long at all. So you have to sleeve H22s, guys. You have to do it. It sucks, but it is what it is. And I learned a valuable, expensive lesson on that because I did spend a little bit of money to get that all rebuilt and then that's what happened. So I did take the time to look over the uh, countershaft elite kit from the kit that I have installed on the A4 to the kit that is on the H22A. Now it appears that it is installed correctly. It's just a different kit and it kind of did it a different way. On the uh, A4 oil distribution rail, I have plugs that cap off the uh, distribution feed to the uh, actual shafts where it goes, right? On this, they did it a little bit different. They just put like freeze plugs in there and they capped it off right there at the, at the journals. So it's all capped off. As you can see, it's capped out throughout. So any feed that goes down there, they put a plug in it. And the only plug that I had to put on the A4 was they gave me a tap to thread out this hole here and then I screwed in a plug right there. So I have like four plugs on the distribution rail plus the ones right there. This one don't have any plugs on the distribution rail. They're just plugged out right there where it feeds down to it. So different method, but I guess same result. So I guess I was wrong in that theory of thinking it wasn't installed right. So it is what it is, right? Uh, let's go ahead and look at the crankshafts, right? This is the main reason we uh, tore things down. So. I'll make sure this is uh, zeroed out. All right, we're good here on zero. I'm gonna measure the H22A crankshaft again, just to do it. All right, 50.2. And looks like 54.96, damn it. So, it's kinda, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I was optimistic, right? Because it's only one year that they made uh, the 50 millimeter crank in the A4s, and that was 97. And the odds are definitely not in my favor. And I was kind of like hoping for the best, but expecting the worst. And that's what happened. So uh, that kind of changes the dynamic of everything. I was hoping to have the right cranks and just be able to push on and just build this thing. So now I have to source a crankshaft to have to I want to source an OEM one that isn't doesn't require machining it's in good shape that's ready to go so I need to take the time source that out and uh, source a rod if I can uh, just to replace that one that's burned up and then once I have all my parts ready to go then I'll be able to tackle this project it's not like uh, we're not gonna do this because I do want to build H22 it's just right now this kind of halts us right Holds the progress. Damn it. So this is what the top of a piston sees its whole life. Picture that. All right, it sucks that we have to halt the progress on the H22 right now, but we'll get back to that once I get the parts that I need and then we'll carry further with this because I do want a built engine for my Prelude. So uh, we'll have to get back to that eventually, right? But a lot of you guys might be wondering what's going on with the EK. And a lot of y'all might be wondering what the heck's going on with the Z32 I have up on the lift. Well, the Z32 is like an original project that I started a long time ago. And I was, you know, planning the RB25 swap it. And I got a lot of the parts and stuff to do it. But uh, for some odd reason, I just can't find myself to start messing with it. You know what I mean? Now, uh, I've been on the same kind of predicament lately with this car. This is a, a car that I have on a playlist that's not finished yet for a budget K swap. And uh, I have a lot of parts for this, and I have uh, quite a bit of parts for that. So uh, I think I'm just gonna make progress on both of them and then it'll be a split because uh, I just can't bear the thought of like letting these things uh, sit idle 
when I can throw some extra time at them and make some progress because some progress is better than no progress and before you know it when those days pass you'll find yourself closer and closer to meeting the end goal right and I found that out with a lot of my cars is you just have to kind of stay constant with them so on this right here this K swap uh, I have a K20 A3 and I know A3 womp womp it's not that good it don't make a lot of power but I got this whole swap originally for 500 bucks and who would not buy this for 500 bucks now I cleaned it up and painted it but I did a compression test and everything tested really good it's a really healthy engine new clutch everything I have a lot of parts in storage for that build and uh, I'm probably gonna start making progress on that and then also for the Z32 RB25 I finally took the initiative and got this transmission uh reconditioned because it had a lot of like scaling from like oxidization on the aluminum so i kind of media blasted it down and uh repainted it so it looks better i haven't taken the uh masking tape off of it quite yet but you know uh that part's done so it's ready to be made it to the rb25 here and the rb25 it's been having a blanket over it for a while but uh yeah it's this is ready to go that's ready to go i do have a light flywheel and clutch and all that for it and i do have the mount kit and all that so i'm kind of wanting to put this engine and transmission together and get it into the car itself but before i have to do that i have to like put lines the brake lines back in it and everything and i did clean up some of the uh the rust and stuff uh they had a lot of rust from where the battery tray was at and it was all coming down and all on the side so i took the time and uh got all that rust off neutralized it and threw uh some paint over it but it doesn't perfectly match so i'm probably just gonna like throw some satin black paint in the engine bay to kind of like mask all the imperfections of it off because it's not gonna be a show car it's just gonna be a a pretty cool car when it's done but i'm gonna have to paint things up in there before i throw the uh, brake lines and all that in there because uh it's a lot of work putting an engine in taking it out just do lines back and forth back and forth so brake lines in the engine bay needs to be painted up so all right y'all so uh this is it on this episode next episode i don't know what it is or when it's going to be but i won't be too long we're either going to work on the ek or we're going to work on the z32 so i'll stay tuned for that thank y'all for watching and if you're here and stuck through the whole thing thank you very much y'all have a blessed one good day or good night